Final hour of trading. Uh, it's a Friday, guys. Let's have a look at uh, how the markets are shaping up heading into the weekend here. Uh, pretty mixed. It's been a tight trading range all day since. The jobs number this morning, remember, at uh, 8.30, 0.06 for the S&P. The Dow's positive. The Nasdaq, yeah, red, a little bit, uh, 0.23. Here in Toronto, look at Brazil having quite uh, the day there. 2.32% to the upside and pretty flat down there for cryptocurrencies as well. That being said, there are a lot of individual names moving around, guys. Let's get into the final hour of the day. Yo! <laughs> Let's do it's it. It's Friday, baby! Let's go! Yeah. It is Friday. Exciting, exciting. It's a uh, long weekend here for in us. Canada. So well, I'm not for us, though. Not for us, yeah, because, you know, we don't sleep, so we're here for the people. Like we keep saying, as long as the markets are open, we are open, but... They, we will, they let us sleep. We will say, okay. Yeah, they do. Uh, well, yeah, sometimes my kids sometimes don't let me sleep. Uh, actually, no, you know, I've been actually really blessed because uh, my kids actually always pretty much slept through the night. I know, it's very... I feel bad to say that because I know a lot of people aren't, but um, yeah, hey, let's get trading again. Thank you for, uh, I don't know if you guys saw me, but Neil and I uh, on Prad's Memes and Movers Midday show, that was a lot of fun today. It was really nice uh, to be on that show and, and, and talk with Prad and shout out to my boy Prad over there doing a great job without Ms. V. Ms. V will be back Wednesday, Wednesday, In Wednesday. Vancouver. So uh, let's go to trading right now. Palantir, the bane of my existence. Uh, today we're going to have one red stock on the board and it's going to be Palantir, but it's not, hopefully not going to be red for too long as we were on the memes and movers show um we took this fill and i mean i was i was over there with prad talking about it we just had our bid down here and uh the bid was at 12 sorry not 11s we bid that 12 there and i don't know honestly like i, I talk about buying lottery tickets and things like that but like we have the top tick there uh, initially with guys out of some of our shares and then we just bled money all the way down and then by some graces we were able to get this bid down there literally at 12 and just sitting there got hit it's the low of the day is 11 so we got a penny off the low of the day and then since then we've just been gradually gaining this back out so palantir still will be red i mean there's no doubt about that today it actually needs to go up all i mean needs to go up quite far now uh, because we just emptied it out but we've made back the money we're going to be green on the day you know, knock on real wood. And uh, we'll see if that can happen. But right now, Palantir on my mind. And then Smile Direct, we still got that banger as well. Yeah, treated wood here. Uh, lots to get to. Yeah, in I'll, case I'll, it rains in the studio. <laughs> it's so true. It's not going to rain here. CEI, look, I'm still in it. Um, it this, was, this is what it's going to rain. That, well, that's the idea. Well, come on, CEI. CEI had, uh, well, it'll, be, it'll be trade of the day, but CEI had a ridiculous move through $2 that I was caught into the long side, flipped to the short, and it's been a short ever since in front of those levels. The current one is 190 before it was a wall at 199 uh, or $2, whatever you want to call it. Uh, XENE, and shout out to everybody in the chat who was already talking about this before we even got on air, um, because don't forget about names on the watch list when they don't, if you don't set up for you day two or day three, don't forget about it, right? And remember XENE, that 34 level, uh, goes all the way back to start of this week on Monday, 34, 34, 34. Nothing, absolutely nothing yesterday. There's no trade, no movement, no test of the top. Well, it just tested the 34 top again. Uh, I took it here at 33 and a half on the way back down, as always. Uh, and then I get some out in front of 33. We'll cover some in front of 32 and a half, see if we can get a dollar winner uh, on XENE. So go back to the well when you can. Uh, these names are in play for a reason. CC... CCXI, uh, to, for some of you guys that were in the, ch if you watched the show this morning, you know I lost in the long in the morning, uh, and then I got one uh, off of VWAP here when it pulled that 33 level that I was buying in front of, managed to hold the afternoon, but it's now trailed me out uh, at $40, trying to get back on, it's trying to get back to the upside here, but I kind of feel like it might be done for the day. I might short it off of this high, even though I was bullish on it all day long, or most of the day anyways. Brendo. Uh, some SPAC action this afternoon. That uh, Red Ball SPAC, Billy Bean SPAC, was halted because of uh, deal news or possible deal news. Bloomberg saying SeatGeek possibly merging with this uh, RBAC. It reopened, guys, but not much fanfare here. It's uh, not doing anything for RBAC. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, so big time uh, movements here. I, I don't know, are we uh, ready to um, possibly announce our biggest 
guest of all time, Brendan. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that uh, to Brendan to see if that's going to be something that uh, we are going to announce. And I don't mean Shaq, as in the biggest of all time. I, I, I think we could have something trade-related uh, ready to come for you guys, and, and you're going to be like, oh, my God. You're not going to believe You're it. not going to believe yeah, who yeah. we're going to have. So we'll wait to see on that. Now, I hope I didn't disappoint. Now it's going to be like, that guy? That's not that big. But I think it's pretty big Want for us. That? We'll wait to see if Brendan wants to announce that, uh, first of all. Okay, guys, let's – Um, it's going to be – you know, that's, that's what they call, what, a cliffhanger or a tease there or something like that? Cliffhanger. No, it's a tease. I don't know, Maggie, right now Maggie's confirming with Brendan about this. So see what I've done here uh, already? Okay, um, <laughs> let's look at Clover first quickly as, as we discuss whether or not we're allowed to drop the bomb right now. Um, all right, so we tweeted this out here. I have no idea what this means, but as a Clover shareholder, I'm pretty happy with a 7% bump today. Chamath, what up, Chamath? Uh, hope you're doing well again, Canadian. Um, okay, so apparently something about Clover here got an MAPPO rating. Right? So that... Obvious. Obviously, yeah. Uh, duh. Um, 3.5 stars versus 3. So that seems like it's maybe an upgrade, right? He's very proud of the Clover Health team. So based on that news, and, and apparently it's old news, so I have no idea, but here the tweet comes out right here. Then all of a sudden we get these spikes up into eight bucks. So I have Clover nine lottos. We'll see if those can fill uh, eventually. I don't know if it's going to work out, but we've been buying Clover off these dips. We've talked about this every day. I talk about this as a swing trade. So, I mean, numerous times. I hope some of you are able to cash out on this, but Clover at the bottom, we've been buying. I'm long in my own accounts. Clover finally looks like a name that's going to win. And again, just for a day trade here, what time is it? 3.06? Lots of time left. We can see if it pulls back into this area, and then we'll start looking at some long. 7.75 or so. But right now, it stops at 8 and takes a, takes a little bit of a dive to the downside. So right now, we'll wait for Clover. But uh, hey, I'm pretty excited uh, for this move up today. Maybe we get some continuation on Monday. Could be a good swing play. There's a lot of interesting guesses out there. I understand why people would guess that the guess would be... Gene. Uh, Simmons? I, this or, is supposed to be a trick. Or Kathy Wood, but like Gene Simmons. Kathy Wood. Vanilla Ice. Like, really? <laughs> you think we, first of all, if we get Rob Van Winkle, that would be hilarious. Uh, my first, well, actually, my second. I challenge Vanilla Ice to a rap battle. You could, I think Live Pratt, could drop, Pratt could drop bars. My second CD ever that I, that I, that I had was Vanilla Ice. Well, technically, my dad, had, my dad bought it. It was MC Hammer, than Vanilla Ice. I'm old. Um, but Tesla, it's not Elon Musk also, by the way. You guys are probably going to think that. It's not Elon uh, but Andrew Tesla. Dice Clay, we got to keep this PG. Andrew guys. Dice Clay, we gotta Dice keep is a PG. legend. Man. The Dice is a legend. I'd love to have Dice on here. See, long story short, done here. If Tesla breaks 790, you might want to think about a bit of a long. The market is trying to hold up positive territory, but that 790 resistance is still there. Tesla trying to make a break. I mean, Vanilla Ice invented rap. I mean, I, I do have that uh, shirt. In, you Ice have that shirt? I do. I, Vanilla Ice invented rap. Maybe I'll wear that. And, uh, I mean, are we announcing a partnership with OVO, maybe, uh, with Drake? We'll see if that's coming through right now. Uh, yeah, cassette tapes. Yeah, okay. Let's just go. I yeah, we're going to have Trader Pratt on the show. Uh, that, that's, our, that's our guest. Um, no, we'll see. I don't know why we, we can't. Well, we'll see. Brendan and Maggie are going to work on this one. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it has to be people that are alive, so Elvis will not be coming Does through so? uh, at this point unless we do one of those. What was that um, Coachella? Where they did uh, with Tupac ah, on stage with, uh, and, um, and that other guy, Nate, Nate Dog, I think it was. Horrible. Warren G and Nate Dog. Don't have to tell people about them. Okay, this is a trading show, so we'll get back to trading now. Um, all right, you guys want to talk about something again here? Let's talk about the sticky note. And, and you know, what we're going to do here, our trading show is fun. It's a good show. We like it. But look, look, look at what I did here. Pratt talked about this on the main show. I only have a few ideas on here. First of all, CEI 250 short. How you like them apples right now? CEI 250 short. Look at Dats, okay? People couldn't read what this was, and then we had some fun on it on the main on, on the memes and movers show. But look, moving again on no news. Dats, right? 950 long break should get us to 11. Okay, so here comes Dats. So let's call that up. We talked about a 950 break should get us to 11. Okay, what is the price of this? 11 right now. Here is the 950 break right here, getting us exactly to 11, almost instantly to 11. So there's the 950 break. There it is right to 11. We'll hit the air horn and we'll do everything like that because hopefully some of you are able to cash out, make some money right there. There it is right there. That's the break, 950 break up to 11. That continues to fly, Neil. 
Damn right. That's right. I was about to say something else, but that's right is is. I'm a, pretty uh, sure you did say something else. Okay, but I did okay, say that's damn that's right. Okay. But I, I meant to say that's right because that's what you got to do. And, and I did say on on CCXI before anyone gets mad that I'm now going the other direction on CCXI. I did sort of say it felt like it was uh, it felt like it was over when it rejected that 40. I got the trail out. It dropped too far. I wanted to see if it held 38. Um, it didn't hold that 38. It broke down. Got to 37. So now I'm shorting the high. Uh, so I got I grabbed 39.85 or 84 as an average price, I mean close enough to 85. Uh, and if it pops down in here, I want to get some out in this cluster. See what happens at 39. I definitely want to consider the rest out in front of 37, 38, and be able to play it both ways. Like if it's still going to be relatively strong, uh, I want to give it a chance uh, and maybe bounce off 37. So this short might be a short time duration that I'm in it? I don't know, that's all I got. Uh, and then Tesla, I did say it pretty quickly, but while we're having some fun there, uh, Tesla 790 is gonna be a bit of a thing. If the high of the day breaks on CCXI, which it just did, there's my stop. Remember, this stock, here's your gap. 45, 45 to 50. Monster, monster levels. Uh, and again, this is the same drug when, when there's questions about whether or not it was going to get approved. Uh, this is the same drug. It, it tanked through 45 uh, all the way into the $8 stock. Today, it's going to get, the, it's gonna get the, the positive news and the gap up. You want to see if it can take that level. I kind of thought when I had the long, it would go there. And of course, I might have just made top wick. Every now and then, it's going to happen to you. If this is the top wick, I'm probably just going to try to get back into the same trade if I can or around the same level. Uh, because when it wicks you out like this, you should probably get back in. So I'm going to see if I can do that. Okay. Um, yeah, we're just getting uh, all set up, rock, ready to rock and roll here. Uh, okay, uh, just 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 waiting to see if there's okay. something else we could trade. We can look at SDC right now. Um, we you know we held this down. We we had this short, great short. We're still in this, but we're waiting to see uh, if there's some more action on uh, the side of this. So we'll. Uh, wait on that one. We are going to look at MRNA. Yeah, that's been a good one. CCXI. Yeah, fifty dollars after hours. We'll wait on that one. What's up, Brendo? All right. Uh, I was trying to be a little bit organized here, but uh, clearly that is uh, a lot of work. On I just want to confirm. This is Wednesday, so I'm not. Uh... No, it's not. It's Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday at ten forty. Everyone who's watching right now, come to the main show uh, because this is coming. Yes, the rogue trader himself. Whoa. Nick Leeson going to be on the show uh, Tuesday, October 12th at 10.45, guys. So make sure you're here uh, for that. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, his motivational speaking that he's very successful in. Now he's going to talk about trading then versus now, his experience in the market then versus now, and how to deal with uh, market change over time. So Nick Leeson, guys, Tuesday at 10.45. There we go. I and mean, look, if you don't, if you anybody that doesn't know who that is, spend the weekend and just the watch weekend. the movie. Just watch Rogue Trader. I promise you, if you're even remotely interested in trading, which if you're watching the show, you are. It is one of the best trading movies ever made, bar none. It's a, it's an unbelievable true story, uh, and he's had a remarkable journey. So, uh, and it, these guys were joking around. I was actually like geeking out a little bit when I found out he was going to come on the show because um, I've seen the movie he, like a million times. My dad was like excited, excited that he was going to come on the show too. Yeah, I mean, he, he literally bankrupted the oldest bank in the UK, Barings Bank. So you guys can look that up. And I mean, you want to talk about, uh, I mean, it's a rogue trader. So you can think about what that means. But anyways, let's just, I, I, I'm getting so super excited about it. I can't wait. Uh, maybe we can ask him some questions uh, as well. But just look it up. And, and again, it's big. And we'll see. Just watch the movie, man. You and McGregor's in there uh, as well, you know, as, as um, Nick Leeson. So anyways, big one. And there you go. Spoiler, spoilers. Uh, we'll, we'll go on there. But anyways, watch the movie. and just It's an amazing movie. And uh, I, I'm sure you guys know about it. Yep. So uh, there we go. Affirm, 6.7% 6, 6. up to 143 today. Uh, Affirm still rocking and rolling. GE still going, man. Paysafe still going down. What a surprise that is. Uh, we're waiting for November 10th for Paysafe. So there's not much I can say about that. Um, the energy right now is starting to go, go nuts a little bit. Palantir right back to VWAP here. So we're super happy about that. 25 cent winner. You know, uh, the stock that I've been getting destroyed on all day. Finally starting to get back to the upside there. So that's good for sure uh, there. And then uh, another name to quickly check on as the market
market's coming back in just a little bit here. Um, we are down that 0.18. We started the day hot off the jobs number and we destroyed uh, that Q's number, but now we're starting to fade out a little bit. Uh, we'll see what the Nasdaq can do here into close. Again, it seems very quiet uh, in the market right now. So I don't expect a big close, but for AMD's uh, standpoint, Back down to 105, looking pretty good there on AMD. So we'll see. Started off hot, came back to the bottom, made some bases down here. So we'll see about AMD, possibly if the market gets going, taking out this top there, uh, then we'll check AMD. And I'm actually going to check on the Qs too. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I, I'm going to get right back into, and I did get right back into that trade. Not exactly the same price on CCXI, but anytime this happens, uh, where you make a top wick, and then it immediately fails, right? So that was a 40.80, and then it failed at 40.90. I mean, for sure, I'm going to jump right back in the same trade. And, and some people were talking in the chat about, you know, like CCI, it was a tough one. It looked strong in the morning, and a lot of people, it, it definitely crushed some souls in the morning. But if you get a setup and you see it, you almost have, you got to take it, right? Like, no matter what you've done on that stock that day, if the setup is there and, and it's part of your rules and it's part of, it's part of your trading strategy, you just got to be able to get back on the horse. Uh, so when it's set up for a long, I did. Uh, when I just got stopped out at the high, it's set up again for the short, so I am back in it. Brendan, what do you got for us now? Uh, Ren Ren, you remember uh, this morning we were talking about uh, R-E-N-N -N in New York. Uh, just popped back up there on, on a bit of a volume spike, back towards 25. So day high is up here, 25 and a half, but uh, huge day. A little Chinese software company, guys. Ren Ren. How do I, how do I make this bigger? I, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but uh, um, here we go. So someone said that maybe there, our guest might be Rev Run. Well, here he is right here. So this is me and him and my lovely wife. Um, we met him in Vegas. So this was in the Venetian. And as you can see, I was a little younger uh, in my younger days. But here we go. This is Rev Run from Run DMC. So right there, we met this guy. Uh, you guys know in New York. What up? Um, so there it is right there. Met Rev Run. Great guy. Talked to him for a couple minutes there. We met him in the Venetian uh, there when we were in Vegas. So there we go. Uh, Rev Run. What up, Rev Run? Maybe if he wants to come on our show uh, for sure. Uh, for sure as Run DMC. Um, amazing. So there it is. Uh, a little bit of a, um, I don't know, whatever you want to call that. Sharing some views there, Rev Run. Thank you uh, to my wife for that one as well. I asked her to find it and that was fast. She did. Um, okay, so that was good. All right, so right now, just looking at the cues, we said we'd have a look here. If the market's going to rally, we need to do this. We need to do this right here. So right through here, 362.62 uh, or so. If we can beat these levels on the uh, NASDAQ, then we'll take that out. So we're going to look at the triple Q's taking out some of these levels getting back to the backside there I'm also debating and I think we will do this heading into the close a break of 361.85 so we're getting much more closer to that so I think a break of 361.85 we're going to take that short as well into the NASDAQ into the close here um, you know I, I, I do think the NASDAQ possibly gives back and then we'll stand I mean we close on the lows that's going to be a problem for Monday but you know I do think that there's a possibility so let's take that right now 361.85 on the downside so uh, this is a good question here, and we got uh, from Secret Owl. What do you rec re recommend for recovering mentally from a red day? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what usually works for me. Like I always try to review my trades in my head, especially when I'm uh, going home on the train every single day. And and it comes down to like it reinforce when you followed your plan or when you didn't follow your plan, right? So sort of look look, look back at the trades and give yourself that mental reward that oh yeah okay I lost on this trade but I got in where I wanted to I got out where I wanted to. That's not the end of the world. And then I like to look. I like to have some kind of a wind down. Whatever it is that works for you. Uh, like if you're the kind of person who likes to hit the gym, then go ahead and do that. Go for a run. Watch your favorite show. Like do something that takes your mind off of things to give you a bit of a break. Like you, once you've done that review, just make sure you're not dwelling on it the entire time. It's easy to get uh, sort of hyper focused on trading uh, if that's what you do, and sort of have that hang with you. Give yourself something that takes your mind off of it. And it actually does wonders because then when you come back, on, if it's a weekend, let's say, when you come back to review things on Sunday, Sunday night, like it hasn't been something running through your head. Like you got a better clear mind uh, instead of letting it dwell uh, over and over again. So I find usually it's something active, um, but it doesn't matter. Like maybe it's reading a book, man. Maybe it's gardening for you. Maybe it's cooking. Like whatever that thing is that helps you to wind down, go ahead and do it. Uh, I, I'm a reader, so I like to, you know, whip out the novel that I'm reading. I always read some kind of a science fiction novel for like 30 years straight. Uh, so I just bring up my book on the train and that's a good way for me to get over it. But everyone has to find their own path uh, to what gives you that chill, I suppose.
Chill, Winston. Uh, okay, oops, uh, we almost, I didn't even put My that. My line, man. I know, I know. I love I know, that. I know. That's why I stole it from you. Um, okay, so what did I say here? Three, I didn't even put this order out yet. Uh, 361, 80, 80, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Let's put that out right now on the triple Qs to get that short. Um, if we do have it, well, you know what? We'll go 361, 79 um, on this trade and then just put it out there uh, and see if that does come through. It looks like it may be hitting right now as the NASDAQ starting to fade out a little bit here. What's up, Bren? There's a uh, major outage for a website such as Facebook, such as there was earlier in the week. Uh, anytime there's any glitch after that, uh, you know, the news feeds always jump on the bandwagon again. But apparently Instagram's not working currently for a few people, guys. Um, oh my God. Facebook's not really doing much, though. All right. Um, I'm just on Instagram. Just, like, Sean just had it open. But it doesn't mean anything. Well, no, I mean, I just, did, they get, did they get screwed up again here, Facebook? Um, let's go over to Facebook right now quickly just to time. see what is happening on this. I mean, yeah, you know what? Like, I'm refreshing my Instagram right now, and I'm not sure it's working either. So, um, yeah, right now, here's, here's my Instagram feed. Uh, you got, yep, there it is. It was just there. So, Trader TV, Sean, not working right now. So, okay. So, let's, when, how, how recent is that uh, news? Because it's not moving. Uh, yeah, Facebook's not really moving here today on that news on the one-minute chart. So, we'll have to wait to see uh, if that's happening. But, uh, yeah, okay. So, we'll, um, we'll pay attention to Facebook on that. But for right now, it is what it is. Uh, Palantir's right back. We just took that bid there, uh, that off. Offer there at 40. Looks like it's trying to make some moves to the upside. So we're long here out there, just trying to make some money back because we did, you know, take a big hit. Not a big hit, but enough of one. And we talked about this on the show. It's kept getting out every single pop we could find. And then eventually we picked that bottom. We bought and picked that. So yeah, it looks like Instagram's down right now. Yeah, and look, uh, I'm not ignoring uh, uh, that that's CEI. Look, if CI moves, CI does something, we'll talk about it. Uh, but it's it's really starting to barcode down here. CCX, CCXI is starting to roll over. Still up 100%, by the way. Like, how impressive is that? A crazy, crazy move. Uh, but it needs to break through. It, oh, sorry, it just broke through 39. I'm looking for it to take out this cluster here at 38.50. Then I got a bit in front of 38 and then 37. Like I said, you get wicked out. Um, and a rejection off that high is, is a setup for you. That's a setup for me. So I get back into the trade. I actually added to it one time as well. And we're going to see if we can't ride this one out. It looks to me like, and I wasn't going to go short on Tesla off of this level, um, but the volume really dying down. As Sean said, like the market looking relatively weak. The longer this lingers, the less I like the breakout on this stock. Uh, but I do want, there is one more name that I do want us to get to because I think we, I mean, kind of might have ignored this one. Uh, I, I traded one shot this morning, really early in the pre-market. This ALLO, the one that had that, uh, they had the cancer drug, um, I guess the, the trial halt. It is just absolutely getting, you know, still, still woodshedded, by the way. But the one thing I will note is, whoops, I wanted to pull back the one-minute chart so you could see uh, in the aftermarket. There was some aftermarket printing at like 12.50 when this thing gapped down. I'm going to be watching this stock because I, I expect some comments to come from, uh, further comments to come from this company. Anything that goes down this hard, it's made, made a firm bottom here at 13 even. You're always thinking about is there going to be a dead cat bounce. So I want to make sure that even though the volume is no good and I don't see a trade here right now, you see a move like this and so much of a gap that could come back and get filled. And I'm going to be looking at this to see if it holds that same support level uh, coming in on Monday, of course. So... Well, I'm going to keep it on the radar. We always say if it's on the watch list, you know, don't forget about it because it could be a bit of a mover. Uh, so ALO definitely falls into that category. Uh, it is what it is. It's not really doing anything now. I wish there was a trade there, but there is not. Uh, Tesla just made the break, so it kind of did it in time. That's not split adjusted, so no good. Uh, there's that 79, 790, 79, 790 area just went on Tesla, so a bit of a break. Let's see if it could sustain it. We're pretty much flat. Tesla has been going sometimes counter trend to the market every now and then. So there is a chance it could get going here without the market following, but I am going to take some profit off before 3.30 time-wise in the next 5, 10 minutes if I'm in the money. And I'm also going to be thinking about this uh, 793 area just to show you guys uh, in the pre-market uh, 792 and a half here, and then this is where we clustered in the aftermarket, and it flushed through that same price area uh, on the way uh, on the way down in the morning. So I am going to think on the way back up, you should find resistance 92 to 92 half, maybe even 93.
Yeah, every time I do, it's right. I'm just talking about wise of me. Every time I do, it's right. Okay. Um, all right, there we go. Um, okay, so I just want to um, thank you to Dan McIsaac, first of all. I know you're a big uh, viewer of the show, but like when I see comments like this, uh, Shagatina bought calls when you mentioned Clove a couple days back. I am now 80% in the money and just cashed out. Boom. So we'll go a big siren alert for you, Dan McIsaac. Congratulations uh, on that. I really like it when I really like to hear those kind of stories. So uh, that's a good one. Thank you uh, for that, Dan. And as Palantir is starting to go back to the upside, let's check on, on our Q's trade. We did hit this early on the jobs number today. As soon as it came out, we, we bought there. Then we bought the dip, cashed out, and then didn't do anything else and got out of the last 5% when we were flat. But right now we're barcoding. We'll check out the imbalances. They're going to come at 350, right? So I expect to be in the short actually before then, but we'll wait to see uh, where it does go from here. We can check back on Clover, but nothing's really happening. Someone said, what about Lucid? I mean, CEI still moving. We haven't done CEI. Uh, in a bit, unless you just covered it. I don't think you did, but what about Lucid there, Brendan? Did I did we miss a story on this? Because um, today, and again, I know a lot of these stocks are beat down today. There's a few other ones uh, that have been going to the downside, it's sort of like DraftKings is down to $48. Some of these high growth stocks today getting hit. I wonder what the 10 years at actually, um, because right now, you're coming to the downside, Lucid with 5% straight down and just hasn't really gotten any reprieve today. A little bit of a bounce back there. I mean, maybe there as well. But every single time, base out, drop, right? Then finally, based out here, hit it, based out, dropped, based out here, hitting the bottom one more time. So I think it's too low to short right now, but for real, like Lucid, I remember being here this day, you weren't here that day, but um, since then, straight to the upside, now Lucid trying to make moves backside here. So what's up, Brendan? Uh, I think it was more uh, the Tesla effect today. Uh, there was this note, guys. Uh, on Tesla, a couple of, in fact, positive uh, analyst notes on Tesla coming off their uh, meeting last night after the closure, remember, uh, to the upside. So just basically comparing Tesla going forward to uh, something like a Lucid, something like an FSR uh, as well. Uh, on the other side of things, here is, Sean, the 10-year. Uh, we got as high as 1.62 at the high there today for the 10-year. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's marching, and we're not, but we're not even at that 1 8 level. Which and that's going to kill, that's what, that, it's going to kill that, the, the growth stocks, right? Because yeah, unfortunately. You got to change the expectation on earnings. Well. We got a question about uh, B Vinco Ventures, uh, BBIG. Down, yeah, well, anyways. Um, $5, can it have a dead cat bounce? Well, anything can have a dead cat bounce. I'll kind of give you the idea where I think it might happen or how it could happen if you want it to happen on Monday. You're going to get an awesome bottom here, and it's not $5. I know it looks like 5 bucks, and that's a nice psychological level, but it broke that several times this week. Uh, so as long as it holds the higher low, I think 490 you come in and test uh, that bounce. Yeah, fair enough. I think that's a decent chance for you on, uh, on Binko Ventures. Uh, if you go to the daily here, it is worth noting there's absolute air beneath this level, um, which... If, that means if it bounces here, uh, I think it can be a good run. Now, keep in mind, this has already been coming back relatively heavily. What you have in your favor is there was previous area resistance around this $5 range. So the fact that it could get a bounce, that's one positive. I mean, the 50 period is not going to matter too much for stocks like this. But the fact that 10% up from here gives you the 50 period also gives some momentum if it does happen to follow through. There's a lot of reasons why it could get back going to the upside. They all start with coming in Monday and then holding that level. So I would, it's not a trade that I think it makes any sense to put on over the weekend because you have gap down risk and the gap down risk is not nice because the support below it is probably closer to $4 uh, than it is to four and a half. And I'd be concerned about that. Uh, that CCXI, I haven't taken anything out yet, uh, but it's starting to go again. So it's, it's sort of breaking that 39 again, trying to get that to that 38 and a half. I am sitting up for a, like about a buck 25 for the first win, and then we'll try to get some out in front of that uh, 37 area as well. This stock, and this stock, it could drop to 35, 36. Um, that would make some sense to me. If you go back to the morning when I was trying that long trade, I remember because I started along around here, like the top end of the range was trying to go like 35 uh, into this 37 area here. So, and you had a lower high put in about 36. I would expect it has a chance to trail all the way back in, <laughs> into here. Sorry guys, these guys put a picture of Prad into the, into the big screen in front of my face and uh, it made me chuckle, that's all I gotta say.
These guys. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Shout out to our Guatemalan friends. What up, Edwin? Thank you so much. Um, trading out of Los Angeles. I think we have some day trade the op day trade the world offices in Guatemala. But yeah. uh, nice. shout out um, to you guys trading in Los Angeles. Go Tesla. Sorry about uh, some of those Tesla fact. I guess the factory is staying uh, in California, but uh, the head office moving to Austin. I wonder if that's affecting anybody out there. If you guys are Tesla employees, let me know uh, what you think about that. We talked about how I think it affects the uh, tax. Uh, aspect of the stock but again I don't think yesterday's announcement was any surprise uh, I tweeted that out yesterday and got it I got actually a lot of comments on that one so um, right there someone day trading mom talking about um, CCXI okay um, right here so I haven't done anything I mean we top ticked that I mean that that was my biggest trade of the day uh, right here on CEI when we offered this and, and got this at 44 we first were short down here so this is what I mean we took a short at 20 there um, and then we got 75% more of the position well I guess three times more of the position there it got an average price of 38 as it was happening and then just straight to the downside boom we have another short in here breaking through two dollars that's the cover 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 uh, went long at 83 got out again covered a little bit there and had haven't done anything since, but I'm looking at this 165 area, and I know you've been trading this a little more active than I have here in the afternoon, but this 165 area could be something. I don't really see any breakout spots to the upside. I mean, we could take this 190, but you guys will be screaming at us if that does happen. So that comes through 190 right here. I don't mind uh, for a CEI break. Smile Direct is making the move now to the downside. So this is probably a cover spot for me. I mean, we're still short from up here. And just to review what happened, and I'm going to take off uh, the uh, part fills here so you guys can see this just a little bit better. So again, see the trade that we had. So this is this is what I was looking at here. So let's pretend we're not in any trade. As this starts to move up, we notice $7. I'm going to short that $7 time, uh, that $7 spot almost every time. If you go on the daily chart, there is some tops here at 7 as well. So that's why we uh, looked at that 7, right? So as it's coming through, we're shorting in here, shorting 693, shorting 698. When it breaks 7, we get out, right? But then look at this top wick here. It's right here. This is what we're talking about. This top wick. Once that was made and we noticed it stopped going, then I just took a shot and said, you know what? If it takes this top out, then we'll get out again and we'll double lose. So you're doubling the risk on a spot that's already went to the upside, but you can see what's happened. It basically rejected that top break right there and then we'll put back on our fills and you're gonna see what happens here. All of a sudden, you know, a negative, pretty badly negative stock, all of a sudden gets reversed to the short side right there. This one right there is the short and then all the way back to the downside. So again, short, short and out, that's eight cents or so we lost on that, okay? It was eight or nine cent loss. Then all of a sudden we put the same amount of shares back onto the short and we start just taking out that cash so right now you know nice little win and we'll see where smart direct goes now but if we zoom back out we still have this short and i think it's at a spot right now that we're going to kill this out so uh, a break backside of 66 which is right now we're going to get on sdc so we'll see if it falls down i'm going to put my stop order at 666 and if that gets printed then we're out but six, right six, now six. I mean, it just happens to be that, but I think that's a decent level. 665 break. We'll wait at 666. I, I, I don't know, man. It just feels like it's bad, <laughs> it just feels like it's bad luck. It, I mean, it is bad luck. <laughs> it is bad luck. Um, Tesla. There we go. We don't always use that. I don't always use that graphic, but we do have it. And I'll throw another one out there because I like uh, I like having fun. All right, Neil. First, I change the stop order 667. For thank you. you. Okay. So I feel a little bit better about stop it. Stop order 667. It really doesn't and shouldn't matter. We're just having some fun here, guys. Um, Tesla. It just got. Through that uh, seven hundred area, if I get stopped out, <laughs> fine. I will. You know what's actually jokes? Um, I, I don't know what, why I'm, I'm even thinking of this. Back in remember in high school, every single bet had to be a dollar or, or a quarter, I or, think or a quarter, and that was because of the movie Trading Places, where the usual bet between uh, Randolph and Mortimer was like, a, even though they're like, they're like billionaires, it was like a dollar every single time, and we thought it was cool. So, anyways, that was us. Yeah, we we're really cool. Tesla seven ninety two, <laughs> apparently not. So Tesla 792 going to take some up, but I want to let this trade ride. The market's doing absolutely nothing, right? Like, we're still flat on the ES. NASDAQ hasn't, hasn't moved an inch. In fact, it was threatening breaking down, and Tesla's breaking out. Oh, yeah, we'll hang on to that long if it wants to go counter trend. We get even a bit of a bump here in the market, and we could head up to that, at least that 96, 97 area. So Tesla going well. That's the upside. This CCI, CCXI, which did reject uh, the top, Continuing to head to the downside. Once it breaks this floor here, uh, watch out for 37. That was a previous high. I'm going to hang on to my short at least till that 37 area and see. Yeah, uh, not really doing much. 
Okay, so that was my attempt at, at a new position alert. So uh, right now we do get that cues. It does break. So now we are short cues 80. So we're just short right here. It just breaks right now. Um, and this is the market. So the NASDAQ 100. So we're going to think that the market fades out here a little bit into the end of the close. So it's 3.33. We have 27 minutes to be proven wrong. We're going to short this thing right down here. See, first, first out, honestly, right here. If we could just take 30 cents and get out of this one, because I'm sort of thinking that, you know, to get stopped out around here isn't so bad. That's going to be 50 cents. So um, if we could take 30 cents on the first bit, it will definitely lessen, the, you know, the hit if we do get back up to the upside. But at the same time, I mean, it's all share dependent, right? It's all about share size and risk management. So uh, let's just wait to see if we can get those fills. But for right now, I'm thinking that the futures come back down. And I do think that we retest something in here. Um, 361.30, 361.25, something like that into here. But we do have a bid to get out just in front of this cluster here. Three, I mean, I think I put it at 50, literally 55. So right in the middle here. We'll see if we can take 25. Five cents on the first bit, uh, and then we'll see. Hopefully, we can get a little bit of a movement to the downside. But again, that wasn't a big break, but there was volume here. Like somebody copycatted that trade, so we'll see right there on that volume break. It was a couple seconds before then, uh, but again, there's these big wicks up, so I don't know what to make of this. But um, a big, big volume spike right now. I'm going to assume it was to the downside. It was on a red candle, so we'll wait to see what happens right now. But uh, temporarily against us, but we do have this queue short now. Yeah, it's interesting. And you're still going counter trend here on Tesla because at the same moment that volume spike came I, in, like Tesla, Tesla did a volume spike as well, but it actually just broke the 93. So uh, it's still going a bit counter trend to the market. I mean, maybe I'm, this trade doesn't work. I, but I it's no, no, but it's, it doesn't. Tesla's not following the market at all because when we were strong, Tesla was showing weakness during the day. So I don't know what's up with that sometimes, but. I'm still going to stick to the notion that this 95, 96 area is going to be my out. I might even, you know, if it gets up there, I'll probably put a trail in. I'm going to hesitate putting an order in because uh, I want to, you know, manage the trade manually. But watch this CCXI. For those of you that, if you're still long and you're bullish in this thing, every single time, you know, it looks like it's going to break down. There's some buying that comes into it. And the volume is really holding. You guys can see the volume. The volume is really holding up going into the close. So, yeah, this short has kind of worked out so far here to give me a buck. But it's right back to close to flat. Like, I'm short 39 and a half. And we're right back to 39.30 here. And, again, trying to test this lower high at $40. So, CCXI still hella strong. Still with that gigantic uh, gap uh, that it could potentially fill. Uh, when it, if, it, if and when it breaks that 41, there's still that 45 to 50 range. So a uh, crazy one here. But it did set up for the short, so I did take it. Got to do it. Um, I thought at one point today that there was going to be a halt wipeout bottom on CEI. And I'm a little bit shocked that it is dying in volume. It's still going to do a billion shares. It's just uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's creeping to it, though. What up, Arun? Uh, there it is, man. A big short right there for me. We just got that bang, bang right there. So you might not have had any of these today, so we'll do one right now. We'll go ba, 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 bang for the close right there. Here we go. Adios, amigos. Nice knowing you, Market, as we're going to the downside right now. Good call there. Um, we were just waiting for something to break, and I was like, you know what? The NASDAQ negative today. It looks like it's going to crack. So there it is. Getting elevated right now is the NASDAQ to the downside. So here we go. Bye-bye. Uh, we'll see you around, and we'll talk to you at the close. Um, I, I'm still thinking somewhere down here. I know I targeted. Oh, oh man. Uh, we targeted. Um, so I'm trying to like pretend like I'm disappointed, but I'm fine. Uh, 361 right there. We talked about getting out at 55. And I said, we'll probably remember, we can rewind this tape. I mean, we talked about it coming back into this area, 361.30, there it is right there. So, yes, sir, let's go, man. Um, people say I don't short enough, but there we go. I short when I see the opportunity, man. And there it is right there, big time trade uh, for me happening. And by the way, how about 45 cents on a short of SDC right now as well? So the funny thing is, as soon as I took that short in the queues, I got out of, I have one, only one piece left on two, about 5% left on Palantir. I got out of a piece there, and Palantir started going up. So that's where I sort of thought I was wrong. But here comes the market to the downside. How about 55 cents, man, to end the day? Let's do a little bit of a hot dog dance here for you. Um, there you go, Natalie. You can see the hot dog dance. Uh, there it is right there on the screen. So uh, we're going to go down to the downside. I think she looked over here thinking I was going to start dancing, but uh, that Maybe. is an animation. It's an animation. Uh, that there's another do, one, too. That uh, we do have there. There's another one that you can always uh, there. Which one do you want to do? Uh, you, know, you know the one. It's the, uh, the sausage one? No, no, no. Oh, the, uh, we have this one, the now. belly dancing one. Oh, the belly dancing. That Watch one. this one. Here we go. We're firing some. Watch out, Neil. That one. Watch out. I'm not, I'm not, 
See, look, uh, that's the trick, right? If I try to dodge it, you go down, and then you go, anyways. What do you mean? I don't know. No, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know how you dodge. Oh, we have a few different ones here. Oh, here you go. Uh, yeah, hide your wife, hide your kids, because here we go. There's the belly dance uh, right there. But, okay, um, anyways, doesn't matter. Let's talk about trading a little bit more. As you can see, it's Friday, and we're in pretty good mood. Uh, to the downside comes the market. So it hit right into our target area. That, that, that could have been a warning shot there. Maybe we should have got out. Let's see what happens. The imbalance is coming out in two minutes in Canada, and then 12 minutes in the U.S., yeah, absolutely. I'm not ignoring XCNE, but it did make a bit of a bounce here. I was kind of thinking I'd get back in at 33 and a half. It got to 33.40 and then just flush. So I barely missed out on a reload in XCNE. I still think it has a chance to drop all the way to 32.50, especially with the volume. It, with the volumes going down on one of these runners, I tend to usually think it's going to be a bit of a pullback uh, and, and profit taking, especially going into the weekend. Uh, Dan McIsaac, yeah, I mean, got to, you definitely have to watch out going into the close for some of these. Um, like I said, CCXI is continuing to show some signs of strength. So even though it's holding in the money for me and it's already, it's already been a good one, you can't ignore the fact that this is a strong upward trend that I'm certainly fading right now. And if you're going counter trend, you should always be careful. I was saying I thought CEI was going to fall. Um, but if, this, if CEI doesn't go in the next 10 minutes, I'm just going to get out of this thing. It's just for the stock that was the most exciting stock probably in the entire week, it is ending the day doing absolutely nothing, right? So there's not much you can do about it. I was all over this thing with, I have 106 executions on, uh, on CEI, which is a lot for me on a stock like this. And pretty much, I'd say well over half of them occurred um, in about a five or 10 minute period. It was kind of crazy. And if you guys were watching, if you guys were watching when this happened uh, right at the end of the show, it was pretty much insane. Uh, and you'll watch it for the trade of the day, but to, long story short, I was long at 203, I got the fill, I blinked my eyes, and I was short at 192. And I've never really seen many things happen like that. Miranda, what's up? All right, guys, thanks so much. We're happy to have the Alkaline Water Company back with us on the show, this time president and CEO. Ricky Wright is joining us. It's a pleasure to have you, uh, Ricky. Thanks for doing this. Uh, some thing. new yeah, initiatives uh, announced for the Alkaline Water Company since the last time uh, we had you guys on the show, including, and this is very exciting, a deal with Shaquille O'Neal, that Shaq, joining the uh, board as a ambassador to the brand. Tell us about that. Yeah, no, it's a great deal for us. I mean, Shaq is one of the most loved uh, ambassadors, uh, people in the world, candidly, and we're very, very fortunate to have him. Uh, Shaq was drinking the water, and he loved the water, and we had the opportunity to uh, engage him. We've been looking for somebody for a couple of years, an a, an a plus ambassador, and they don't get any bigger or better than Shaq, no pun intended. So we started that deal and it took us only about 60 days to close. And Shaq is not only a great spokesperson, but Shaq is a super intelligent human being and he's a great businessman. So we're really, really happy to have him on board in that regard as well. Uh, he comes along with a company called Authentic Brands Group out of New York. And Authentic Brands Group actually bought the brand Shaq a number of years ago. And so they're in this deal too. And they're the third largest branding company in the world. They also own the brand rights to like Marilyn Monroe and, and Muhammad Ali and a little guy called Elvis Presley. So Shaq's their first living legend and Shaq's doing an unbelievably good job for us. It's an equity deal primarily. Uh, we just closed with uh, our chairman and Shaq leading a $5 million round. And that closed on the 29th of September. So uh, Shaq's been a great, great, great asset for us. We have cut our first commercials with him. We're going to do 30s, 15s, and 6s. Uh, they're in final production. So we're looking to launch those literally within a couple of weeks. And we'll start uh, in some markets uh, to test it. And then come NBA season, uh, when it starts to heighten in January, and Shaq's getting all that love on TNT, uh, we'll start pushing this out in a much broader, broader way uh, beginning January this year. It's uh, an exciting announcement and it spe uh, speaks to the tremendous growth that this company has had uh, in a very short time. Uh, tell us a little bit about what it has been, in your opinion, that has uh, contributed to this uh, tremendous growth over the past few months. A couple of different things. You know, one is, uh, you know, we're big on taste profile. So we have a wonderful tasting product. And you know, once a consumer tastes it, I can argue that we have the most loyal consumers in the, in the country. You know, we obviously were smart enough to uh, trademark Alkaline 88. And so when the Alkaline 88 uh, 
trend occurred or the outgoing trend occurred, there were only about 95 million in sales. Now I think this year it's gonna be a billion three. So we have been able to capture and grow with that trend. And then finally, you know, we really are uh, about the talent I surround myself with. I've got a great management team. There's tons of people that come up with great ideas that don't succeed. Uh, we have a great idea, but we work really, really hard and we have a very, very talented team. So four initiatives, just so you know, we still have uh, some of these kicking around as well uh, at yeah. the office. Since the last time uh, the company was on the show, we, uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the water. So thank you for that. Uh, Four initiatives, really, that the uh, company is following and working towards. Uh, tell the audience what they need to know about those. Sure, sure. We're you know we're we're focusing on the billion dollar industries, right? Uh, where we have billion dollar opportunities in hospitality, e-commerce, clubs, especially especially retailers, uh, and functional CBD waters. And we see all of those, all the stats, all the data shows us that those are all going to be billion dollar, already billion dollar markets in the very near future. Hospitality was our first big uh, initiative this year. You can see that uh, you know a lot of the hospitality places are moving away from plastic. They want aluminum. We've got an aluminum bottle that we think is gonna be huge. We hired a guy named Gary Bliss out of Nestle's, great Rolodex. He spent the last two weeks talking to some of the presidents and major players in that industry. We're coming out with a 750 milliliter bottle for the hospitality industry. And we had a big win in the airports already. We're gonna be in nine of the major airports in this country. Uh, 450 million people go through those airports every year, and it's it's a pretty big deal for this company. Next, we got e-commerce. We hired a guy out of Accenture for e-commerce, and you know he grew that to, to a huge number. I see that as our big upside surprise over the next 12 months. Uh, we do very little in e-commerce right now relative to our top line. Most of my competitors do 20 30%. If we hit that kind of number, look out, uh, we're going to have a huge, huge upside opportunity. So a lot of, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, in addition to e-commerce, you know, we're also looking at um, our, our really kind of our fun project, uh, not not as fun as Shack, but one of our, our more fun projects this year is we just launched our functional CBD. And anybody that reads the press knows that California has just uh, approved CBD as a as a uh, water that we can actually use and, and you know, to drink now. Uh, beginning, I think it was yesterday that the governor actually signed. So this is a cool new, we just introduced this at trade shows. Boom. Oh, wow. Yeah, and you know, just just for those that missed it, ready, we'll do another. <laughs> Boom. Oh, that's and it, great. It's not only, it, it's so, you know, CBD, one of the big complaints is when it's in plastic, it disappears in a hurry, you know, it starts to, to dissipate. This, is, this thing is uh, trapped in dark, it stays cool. And lo and behold, it's good for five years in, in that. And when you turn it, that's the first time it comes out and it gets exposed to oxygen or light. So it's a really, really cool product. And we're looking to do some functionality uh, beyond just CBD. I, I, just in, in curiosity's sake, is that going to be available uh, on our side of the border up here in Canada? Uh, you know what? We're working with some, some groups up in Canada. Fantastic. You know, we, we hope we hope to have that happen, and and then finally, obviously, in the clubs, we we made a big announcement this week on Sam's Club, and I don't think anybody realizes how big that could be for this company going forward. It's our first foray into in the clubs, and I see that as just another opportunity for us. Uh, you know, we developed this with Shack, the big old Shack pack. The Shack pack. Uh, <laughs> and you know, we, we developed that specifically for the club, so that's our first joint venture with Shack in terms of co-branding. We uh, we spoke about uh, the Sam's Club deal on this show going back to uh, the day it was announced. So uh, we're thrilled that uh, this has been a success. Uh, we we enjoy the product. We enjoy having uh, you on the show as well. Uh, appreciate your time this afternoon. Uh, Ricky Wright, President and CEO of the Alkaline Water Company. Uh, have a great uh, weekend, and we look forward to another update soon. Thank you very much. Remember, we're the most undervalued stock on the exchange, in my personal opinion. W-T-E-R, guys, on the NASDAQ exchange. Thanks very much. Blessings. There we go, guys. Uh, water, if you're looking for it. It's, I love the ticker, of course, uh, a shack. I think that's a cool. That box was the best. The, the box is amazing. The that, that was a cool product, man, and uh, hopefully they get it in Canada. I, I, I want to pop some of those things, so we'll, we'll see if we can get some on live on the show. There right. it is. There he is. That's the ad Yo, right what there. What up, Shaq? Yeah. What South up? Beach, baby. <laughs>
<laughs> what up, big man? And you know where you know he's in Miami, by the way. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, obviously because he lives there. But South, South Beach is that's the ish, uh, anyways. But <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll say this because uh, we we can pull up the chart and you can look at the double bottom. Uh, you can look at the fifty. Uh, you can th look at the fifty period breakout over the t over the two hundred, and then actually hold that higher low on a recent dip. So some of the technicals are pretty interesting. And then if I look at this, it's weird. Like you, all, all the stuff that you usually hear me say about historical levels, you pull it up, and these actually end up happening here. Uh, then you have a previous top one hundred and eighty being tested at the fifty period moving average. So you are getting a potential breakout uh, on this name with support down at about one hundred and thirty, and that's a lower high. To be, that's a lower high as well, right? So. Have a look at it. It's up to you guys what you want to do. Uh, we have about 10 minutes to go here to end off the week. And uh, for everyone in Canada, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, yep, to everyone yep. in the States, we will still be here on Monday because it's only U.S. holidays that we take. The U.S. market's open. We're here. There was a mini flush in CCXI while we are doing the interview, so I did get some out in front of that 37. It's since bounced back to the upside. And then as I was complaining about all you got to do, man, is complain a little bit about uh, CEI. I was like, it's not really doing anything. And then, of course, like it made a nice little drop right into the recent low here. Now, 163, it's a random price, but that's been the 162, 163 has been the bottom for the entire afternoon, and it just fell into that price to give me a fill. I'm going to be bidding in front of 155, which if you go all the way back, if you go all the way back, let's look at a 15-minute chart here. If you go all the way back, Oh, uh, 155 gives you a support level way, way back over in the, uh, the, on the 23rd of September, and that's where it turned around. I don't think that breaks today. I'd be flat if it got to 155 on CEI. Superman is in the building one more time. Hey, Ms. V, how are you? Um, okay, so there it is, man. We just got out there flat on the, not for flat. I mean, it's a big trade for me on the queues. They're 360-180. I just didn't want to wait for the imbalances to come out. So for right now, um, I'm just not going to wait for those. So there it is. It's coming out right now. The NASDAQ in, and the NYSE imbalances. We just saw some bottoms there. If I just zoom this in a little bit more. Saw some bottoms on the queues there made. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just not letting this thing rip back up to the top side. So again, we did get out there. Looks like it's still damn it uh darn it i mean uh it's still tanking to the downside but hey guys congratulations anybody has that move because i did oh no 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 this was a dollar winner uh and we didn't take it all but there it goes man i mean whatever as long as we called it and as long as you guys still have this uh, uh, I should have waited for those imbalances to come out first, but I was just nervous. That, I mean, look, they come out the other way, and it spikes to the upside. But, hey, remember when we started the show, I said NASDAQ probably retests these bottoms? Oh, man, I think I'm getting better. Uh, I mean, that wasn't the last time. I mean, we made some good calls here. So let's just wait to see where we go from here. But that's good, man. I think we'll do some more trading uh, on the queues and whatnot. But that's a big banger right there uh, to the downside. So congratulations to anybody that trailed uh, me on that one for sure. Um, and there's not even that much on here. Like, why did that? Anyways, uh, whatever. Let's just see where we go. But uh, you can see right here, um, Info, RGS, Verizon. What are we looking for, Neil? Intel is there. Uh, there's the, I mean, the queues is there, but that's nothing like 400,000 shares this thing's done uh, 36 million there it comes right back to the upside there so good thing we did get out but we didn't miss that big flush uh, down but I don't see much on here to wet the whistle yeah and I'm gonna have to start covering some of these positions uh, probably first with XCNE I like I'm gonna hold on to X CCXI here uh, just because the trend is pretty solid and it's been in the money for me so well uh, that I might as well just roll with it here so we'll hang on to that one CEI is so liquid it just it doesn't really matter. Like, CEI, the bid ask is pretty ridiculous. Uh, so you want to make sure you're holding on. To, oh, I want to make sure I'm holding on to that one. It's just anything that's not moving that, you know, on, like, one little whim could start crushing back into the upside. And XCNE could do it. Like, it's already held 32.60 here at uh, one time. Look at the higher low. This is 32.80. There's, a, there's an order there that is checking the whole level up. And it's not even a lot of shares. It's just a couple thousand shares that are sitting at 32.80. And that's managing to hold this thing at that price for, you know, the greater part of an hour or so. So it might not give me anything more. But again, you don't get this trade if you aren't paying attention. This stock was on our watch list on Monday morning, uh, XENE. And since then, has given you an absolute gift every single time it's tested 34. Right? It, it, obviously, it ran into 34 on the first day. It then faded multiple times off that recent high on Monday. It then faded off that price again on Tuesday. It, you, you, sat out, you, you sat this one out again, and then you look at it here today, and we're going to short off this level, and it's going to work for you. So am I going to look at 34 next week on XCNE? You better believe I'm going to. You go back into the well until it, until it runs dry, and that's the name of the game in trading. You can't get bored with something that works. 
You just gotta you just gotta suck it up and make the cash uh, because that's what this game is all about. That's what trading is all about. We have not. I feel like we have not talked about uh, uh, Alibaba, and the only reason I want to bring it up is because it got that Munger bounce or whatever. Oh goodness, what is that wick? Uh, it got that Munger bounce. Um, Alibaba is holding up, holding up at 162. So uh, holding the highs, Alibaba, even in the midst of the pullback. That's why I want to bring this one up here uh, because even in the midst of this pullback, Alibaba is holding the highs. So you're still getting that nice movement up. Uh, Charlie Munger doubling his position on Alibaba. Some of the Chinese stocks. Uh, looking relatively strong, and on top of that, of course, uh, President Z um, doing a—is it a Zoom meeting? Are they going to have a Zoom meeting with know. Joe Biden? I, I, doubt, I doubt they even have one. I well, hope they do. I, I mean, obviously, yeah. I think we all hope that <laughs> that's going to happen. Uh, we're almost done here today, so thank you for watching. It's been a big show. Um, you know, crushed it in the morning for you guys, and then the memes and movers was fantastic uh, with Trader Pratt as well. And hopefully, you're having some fun here. That was a fun interview, and I think uh, you know. Definitely an opportunity uh, to go. So we'll wait to see what happens with water. But uh, right there, Palantir, getting ready to get out uh, on the top side there. And if you just want to look here, Smile Direct, I mean, we're basically down to lows. I think we can just put a bid and get out. I mean, there's not a whole lot of volume happening right now. So if we can get picked up on the bid, we'll do that. Um, and then Palantir as well, with only six minutes to go. I mean, we battled back on this name. Like, we just kept on taking these out. It's funny because as the NASDAQ, I mean, remember we talked about why we got involved in Palantir in the first place was the NASDAQ ran up. And Palantir wasn't, or sorry, Nasdaq came down uh, at 8.30. That's not, that, that's the jobs number. This is the market actually opening up here. So Nasdaq came to the downside, okay, and Palantir was rocking up. So that made me think that we would be buying Palantir up here. When the Nasdaq is moving down and this is going up, I was like, what's going to happen if the Nasdaq reverses upside? We had a huge winner, but then the complete opposite happened, and Palantir just kept on sinking, 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 and we averaged in. These are the really two averages in. This is where we lost on, and we just kept getting out on any pops. That was a relief pop right there. Thank God. That happened. Um, and then when it was flowed to the downside, I was over there talking with Pratt, and I just left the bid in here, knowing that we had a 23 stop, and that we didn't have to worry about it. It filled us, and we've just been ticking it up all the way down, so uh, or all the way to the upside. So that was a good trade for us, needless to say. We'll get out of the rest of Palantir here. Let's just check on CEI. I know you guys are looking at that. Again, we can, we'll cancel some of them. Let's cancel all these orders now. It doesn't look like I want to take any fills with only five minutes left. Neil and I actually trade stock, so it's not um, an options trade or anything. We have yeah. to close. We have to close everything at four o'clock. So no holding overnights, no anything like that. So we're gonna get out of Palantir now as we're up here. So we'll do that, and we're gonna get out of a smile direct. So this is a 35 cent win on Palantir and a 43 cent win as it's making moves right now. The downside on Smile Direct. I'm just gonna cover it now. 45 penny winner for Smile Direct. Yeah, and uh, I had to cover some more shares of CEI. There's a bidder here on. Oddly enough, the Amex gateway, which you don't see very often, but uh, it's an Amex stock and it is a primary here. Well, formerly Amex anyways. Uh, but driving this stock up and it's just, it's kind of been grinding higher since I got that fill at 62. And uh, look, with only four minutes left to go, we have to be flat anyway. So it's not going to do the flush. For all you CEI bulls, uh, CEI is closing off the lows. It held that support at 155. It held a higher low at 163. Uh, so it is looking pretty good. And for all the bulls over in CCXI, as good as the short off of 40 was that second time through, or I, I should say is because it's still in the money, um, it is trying to get close to that top. I wouldn't be... The only thing that makes me say it's not going to make a 4 o'clock run uh, would be the fact that it is the weekend, and I kind of feel like that doesn't happen as often on Fridays as it does earlier on in the week. But uh, again, this is a name that should be on the radar uh, going into next week. I will be getting flat in the next minute or two, no matter what. I mean, if it breaks, if it breaks break even, 39.50, I'll get out. If it flushes and tests this 37.5, I will also get in that regard. Uh, we, you know, I'm not going to hold this one into the aftermarket and try to be a hero. Uh, I just got out. That Amex order is really holding CEI up. No reason to hang on to it. But I will give CCXI up until maybe like 358, 359, just in case it wants to make one last final push downside and give me more than just the buck we have here. So out of Palantir, out of Smile Direct, good trades uh, so far there. Um, Okay, Mike, I'll give you the imbalance locator, no problem. Still waiting for those shoes, FYI, just, just playing around. Um, okay, here's AT&T. Everything is a sell. Sell, 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 sell. Everything's a sell until you get to RGS, whatever that is, and BRX. So um, a couple bids down here, which means nothing. But look at this, J&J, &J, you know, big sell there. Coke, a big sell. XOM, a big sell. Um, I mean, these aren't big. I'm just telling you that, that, that they're on here. Uh, Verizon has a sell, AT&T. So 
you know, obviously there's some telecommunications there being sold off. Uh, other than that, I mean, the queues on the Nasdaq to sell, but that's just going to go back and forth. I don't really expect anything from that. Um, but the big one, you know, mon you know just, just by straight um, value-wise is going to, notional-wise, is going to be j and J, I I think here, uh, with $400,000 and $160 stock. So that's probably the biggest one. Uh, XOM, of course, we, see, we saw oil up today, 1.6%. So these are the closes there. You're welcome, Mike, uh, for that and for everybody else there. Um, let's just check where is Clover ending the day also. Um, I'm hoping it ends uh, north of 8 yeah, okay, so not doing that. But a nice bounce area there, 775. I think this is a swing candidate here uh, off some of that good news. We'll find out what that means. Could get some upgrades on Mondays, and if that happens, then watch out. I still have those $9 calls. I don't think that's going to go anywhere until this, you know, but we'll see uh, where it goes from here. But that's $9 on this name, and uh, that's Clover holding out 775. So that's a good sign there to me that it didn't fade back. A lot of these names will fade back uh, after a nice pop, and this kind of held its highs. So, I mean, not its complete highs, but we're still pretty happy with this move. Yeah, and for me, the stock that should have been traded today that was not, uh, I'm going to mention AEHR, which was a runner from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I know Brendan brought it to our attention on the main show. The reversal here was at $20 almost on a dime. Uh, I'm going to be all over this one. Uh, we, uh, I don't even care about the direction on AEHR. Whether it's a, tw a $20 break or fade off 20 on Monday, uh, I want to be having that trade. If it can be there, it's been super, super strong. And let's see if we can't play that one. Mike, I have your shoes getting authenticated. Uh, so Nike X undefeated Air Force Ones. Thank you for the super chat. We appreciate you, all of you guys. Uh, you've been super, super and fantastic. And all the love. That, you know, you know Prab, was, Prab was saying he was worried about doing the show uh, solo without Miss V. And it went fantastic. Of course, we all miss Miss, 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 miss V. And uh, Prad, he's, look, he, he killed it so much that he tired himself out uh, and is falling asleep on... <laughs> Clearly, he's not trading the clothes, obviously, there, but Prad, he deserves it. It was a fantastic show. It's been a fantastic week. Stick around. Trade of the day is going to be CEI. It's been the Camber week, so might as well end it off talking you, about that one. You see Natalie behind us, so our newest member. What up, Natalie? We'll do, um, uh, you know, happy to have her through. So uh, with only 15 seconds now, we'll start to do the 10-second countdown. We'll hit that uh, on the board, and here we go. With only 10 seconds left, I hope you guys all had a great week. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get this bell rung a little bit here, Natalie. And three. Three, two, and one. There it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. And a little swing there. Yeah. I like yeah. it. I like it a lot. So uh, thank you so much for that. We are going to have, of course, our trade of the day coming up very, very soon. Right after the show, you'll be pushed straight over there. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. I do want to give a big thank you, uh, of course, to Lucas and to Rob uh, today for running the board there. You can't there, he there he is there uh, as well. What's up to Natalie as well for coming through today and accepting the job offer. That's very kind of you. Thank you to Maggie for continuing to um, do all, you know, tons of work uh you know behind the scenes and uh thank you to prad today the, the bell woke well. prad up apparently yeah yeah that's fine we don't need to is he, we want to show maggie there she is hey maggie what's up uh okay and uh brendan so uh what are our plans this week and i have um I have a little bit of hockey, the parents coming over, uh, and the brother for Thanksgiving as well. So that should be fun tonight. My kids are going to Code Ninjas, and it's called uh, Parents' Night Out. So we get to drop them Ooh, off nice. for a couple Man hours. Out. They do some coding. I pay lots of money for this, and then I get to go out and spend more money on dinner. So that sounds fun. Sounds hey, good. man, it's Thanksgiving, so sounds I'm going to ha happily spend it with some family, get some turkey, and hopefully tonight finish Squid Game because I've been really lax on it. I think, I think it's like 40 minutes. How many episodes do you have left? What, I think there's nine. Is there nine? Okay, I, like two, I, two, yeah, two. I think the second last one's only 30 minutes, and I think 40 minutes after that. Brendan, plans. Oh, how's your, uh, how are your rentals going? Actually, I actually haven't asked uh, that's, that's my plans, guys. That is my plans. I'm going to be picking flooring tonight. Ooh la la. So that's exciting. Uh, and then, yes, more boring construction stuff all weekend long. While I have you, let's have a look at how things ended uh, for Oops, the week, about guys. That. Still yeah. negative uh, across <laughs> the board, all three. 0.18, 0.01, half a percent for the NASDAQ. So ho-hum after the jobs report this morning, guys. Yeah, I mean, Canada flat there, but still positive. Why not? Uh, we'll take it. It's been a fun week, a fantastic week. Uh, like we said, stick around for that trade of the day. I don't think, I don't think picking flooring is actually that bad. Um, <laughs> oh, it's bad. I don't know. Are you redoing the whole, just your kitchen, or what is it? No, our, our main floor of our place. Oh, okay, okay. So, all right, well, good luck. Tile. Wood is wood, yeah, yeah wood, tile, ceramic. Okay, uh, big show. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a 
great weekend. We are back on Monday. So uh, for all you Canadians, we're back. Tune in and we'll see you then. Have a great weekend. Ciao. Bye, guys.